Just begin to tell them something sweet. God, you're a man. 
usual in this place. Anybody that say, I didn't come to have church as usual. But whatever you want to do, do it in me. Is that anybody's testimony today? Whatever you want to do, God, do it in me. Come on, y'all too quiet. Today, Jesus, God, we're ready for you. 
all you have to do is step in. Tell somebody, step in. Everything that you need, that you're desiring from God, it's already here today for you. Tell somebody, say, it's already here today for me. Now, I want you to take about 20 seconds and go to somebody, give them a hug. Shabbat praise comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Let me hear you Shabbat the Lord in this house and give them high praise. We love you, Jesus. Come on, get out of here. Extend your hands. Hold on him. Lift up your hands. Shout hallelujah. deserves intentional praise. So tell somebody, listen, I come here today with intentional praise. Hallelujah. So this is what we're going to do this morning because we are a diverse aggregation of believers. Because we're a diverse aggregation of believers, we're going to have a little fun this morning. Is that all right? We're going to praise the Lord in a different way, in a reggae way this morning. Is that okay? Even if you're not from the island, go ahead and pull your fake accent out right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. We're going to praise him in an unusual way today, all right? Why right, go on. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is my rock. He is my rock. We're going to have fun. Let's have some church. Here we go. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Here we go. Come on.
he's the rock of your salvation. If you know he's the rock of your salvation, we honor, we bless him. He's the rock. It's known that the builders rejected the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. His name is Jesus, and he is the rock. Come on, lift your hands up in the presence of God. Now open your mouth and thank him. You've sang about who he is, now worship him. When you praise him, you master thanking him. But when you worship him, you master touching him. Now is your opportunity to touch him with your worship. Open it up.
about what he did for you today. Think about what he did for you yesterday. Father, we thank you because you're worthy. You're worthy to receive glory. You're worthy to receive honor. You're worthy to receive our praise. Can we just take a moment and lift our voices to let the Lord know how grateful we are? He's worthy. This isn't a time to spectate. This is a time to participate. Hey, Shay, Moko, Tamayata. This is a time to participate. Will you stretch outside of your comfort zone? Because there's a loving God who loved us back. When we didn't even love ourselves, He loved us back. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Glory to your name, Father. We thank you right now, Lord God. Touching our lives. We thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that you didn't leave us in a low place. We thank you right now, God, for healing us, for delivering us, for setting us free. We thank you, God, that it is in you that we live and move and have our being. Father, that you never forsake us. God, you didn't forsake us, but you saw us, God. Thank you for seeing us, God. Thank you for healing us, God. Thank you for setting us free. Oh, where would we be without the goodness of our you are worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Jesus. God, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Jesus.
about us starting a, another service. I said, no, I ain't ready for that yet. But I won't say no. Right, Pastor Eileen? I won't say no. So when I went before the board of directors and we were talking and they were saying that people are starting to have to park on the street, that just blew my mind because I didn't know. But God's going to make room. We're going to fill this whole parking lot from corner to corner for Jesus. And people who are lost, people that are hungry, people who don't smell like we desire for them to smell, people that are in need of a Savior are going to come in because it's not the well that need a physician, it's the sick. And God has called us to the sick. He's called us to the sick. And those that need to come in, that this will be like a hospital. They'll come into this house one way, but they'll leave a whole nother way. Anybody agree with me? We're going to pray it in the other week. Come on, that's right. They're going to come in one way and come out and walk out looking a whole nother way. They're going to come in broken and walk down healed. They're going to come in lame and lame and walk down, walk out healed. They're going to come in deaf and walk out hearing. They're going to come in blind and walk out seeing. That's the type of miracles that we're declaring and prophesying that's going to happen in this house. God is filling the house, not us. God is filling the house. And so we're going to make room. We got to make room. I got one of my girls. She's looking up shopping for, for chairs right now. The board. Anyway, there's so we're going to get a hundred more chairs. We're going to figure out where to put them. So everybody say each one reaches one. So each one reach one. We want to reach more than one, but each one reach one. So really quickly, don't forget every Tuesday night we have Bible study. Do we have it this week? Okay. Yeah. So we have Bible study 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. Baptism is today right after service. So we're going to try to speed dial everything. We want to have enough time for the word to come forth. Children's choir rehearsal. The children are singing for Easter Sunday. So they have rehearsal this Tuesday. Is it at 7 still? Is that right? 7, 7 p.m.? Okay. So I think the children will be on that side as the adults are here. They'll be rehearsing while we're having Bible study. Okay, so children's rehearsal will be Tuesday, this Tuesday and Wednesday in preparation for Easter Sunday at 7 p.m. for one hour. We need all the children here on time, all the children. Listen, if you don't bring your baby on Tuesday night and Easter Sunday comes, we're going to still pull your baby on the stage, all right? Just tell them to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. Y'all know the rest. So we want all the children and then the men are going camping this weekend, actually. Friday. That's right. Give it up, men. They make a noise in the house. I'm going to ask all our men to stand really quickly. I'm not going to embarrass you guys. All the men. I want y'all to see every man in the house. All the men. All the men. Y'all just look around and see all of these men. Ladies, let's celebrate the men. Towers of strength. for standing in the gap for us. Thank you for protecting us. You know, somebody coming here wrong, I feel for them. We got girls in here that know karate too. But our men, they stand at the gate and we love them. We are honored that you all are here standing in the gap and standing as protection for all of us. Let's continue to keep our men in prayer. Easter Sunday is this coming Sunday at 10 a.m., 10 a.m., uh, I would suggest you get here early to get you a seat. And we want to try to fill every seat, okay? Um, and we'll pull out. We got chairs already reserved and all that. Um, when women worship, don't forget registration is now open. And we're running a special. Oh, everybody's locked in. God is just so supernatural. I had two last people. I, was, I saw their face and emailed them. I'm not even on social media, guys. And I went on Instagram and inboxed them, and they answered back. So I am so excited um, that they're coming. But When Women Worship, you can go, you can Google it and put When Women Worship Conference, and it will pop up on Eventbrite. 
um, there. And so um, we're going to run the early bird special. We're going to continue that a little while longer. All right, everybody ready to give? Let's give, let's give. Oh, let me talk about this really quickly. So something that we are about to do that we used to do years ago, one thing that we started to do, we're doing now, is um, our declaration. And we're already seeing fruit from our declaration. But every one of you all, when you leave today, you're going to get a miracle seed offering card. What I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying is that springtime is seed time. And we have to get our seeds in the ground. And so on the back of the card, it says, with every seed, there is a harvest. And when you honor God with what we've been given, there is a guarantee that he will reward us according to the seed that has been sown. And so when we talk about miracle seed offering, what we're doing is this is in addition to your tithes and offering. We have a goal of, well, I have 48,000. I moved it to 24,000. Look at them. They're like, what's wrong with you, girl? We ain't going to, listen, how about this? We're not going to worry about the end number because there is so much that God wants us to do. And I believe as a house, God wants us to have a reservoir of finances so that we can be able to bless people even more when they need help. Okay, y'all with me? When we talk about money, we get quiet, right? But these seeds don't have to be sown just by those in impact. You all know this ground is good ground. So this is the opportunity for you all to sow an extra amount. We're gonna do it for the month of April only. So next Sunday, there are gonna be these bright yellow envelopes. We were hoping to have them ready by today, but they won't be ready until next Sunday. Bright yellow envelopes. And you can mark, it can be an extra seed of $100, extra seed of $224, or $400, or $1,000. These are extra seeds that you can sow, or whatever amount that you can, okay? This is for your harvest. And I'm telling you, it doesn't always make sense, but it works. It works. I have planted seeds that have carried my family for years lack of jobs, loss of jobs, and it will carry you, the seed will carry you. Look at somebody say, your seed will carry you. So everyone will get one of these cards so you can kind of get an understanding of what this is about. All right, so we have several ways to give. Oh, I didn't know what's up there. Several ways to give through cash. We can give um, online. You can go to goimpactva.com or you can text to give, the number is there. Um, that's also the QR code for online giving. Or you can go to cash app, dollar sign, go impact VA. Some people have already started sowing their, their seed. They've already been taught about it. I, you know, thousand dollar seeds, they told me, have already started coming in. Because it sets up your harvest. And God cannot bless a closed hand. Where does this money go? This money goes to the uplifting and the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. It does not go into our pockets. We use it to bless people, to help people, to see what God wants us to do outside of the walls. Amen. I ask everybody to stand in preparation of your gift.
increase. Father, we thank you right now, God, for every seed that was sown today. And we ask, God, for every person that's sold by faith, that, Father, that you would multiply and increase the gift that they have given to the house of God for the uplifting and the upbuilding of your kingdom. I pray, Father, that you stretch it far and wide, that you bring even more to their household, to their families, to their children, for the sacrifice of their giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Anybody ready for the word? I want you guys to put your hands together. that I ever go by that he is not in the word. Sometimes I look and I say, man, I know his face is imprinted in the pages of that Bible. He has a whole lot more discipline than I do. And it's not just because he reads the word, but I, I want you all to know that, that he really labors in the word of God every single day. It's his lifeline. Anytime, and he'll tell anyone, anytime that either of us have ever even thought about stepping outside the will of God is because we got out of the word of God. The word of God will be your compass. It will be your light. It will be everything that you need it to be. But we want to honor you for your heart, for God, and for the word of God. And we pray blessings on this word. Amen. that has breath. Praise the Lord. I, I walked over to give Sister Julia a hug and I was looking to give her a word of encouragement and she turned and said to me, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. If you've never been through anything, you don't know what she's talking about. But if you've been through hell and high water, God delivered you. You got to admit, you got to admit, you got to admit, you got to admit that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know we celebrate Paul Sunday. We talk about the child for infant. When the Lord Jesus came on and said, Oh, he's gonna die the daughter of Zion, lowly coming on a coat, with the foal of the donkey of a coat. And the Bible says that they begin, they begin to put their clothes on the foal. They put him on top of the, the, the clothes. They begin to lay palm branches all down the way and sound singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, which is translated, Son of David, save me. Hosanna, Hosanna. They told the people, told the Lord Jesus, said, won't you tell your people to be quiet? The Lord Jesus said, if I tell them to be quiet, the stones will cry out. Are there any living stones in the house today? Is there anybody that loved the Lord Jesus? Got another praise in your neck. Got another praise. Got another hallelujah. Got another amen. Hallelujah. If I tell them to be quiet, the stones will pile. Hallelujah. 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 Good God from Zion. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. And I know I'm not the only one, but God has seen us through a lot of storms in life. God is faithful. He's faithful to our unfaithfulness. He loves us even when we don't deserve it. Hallelujah. He died for us not after we got right or while we were in our sins. But I got to ask you something. If he died for you while you were sinners, how much more will he do for you now that you are his children? How much more will he bless his children now if he died for you when, when you won't write? How much will you do for you now if you if you give him your life? How much will he celebrate you if you have his spirit living on the inside of you? Hallelujah. He died while you was in sin. He didn't wait till we got right. He died while we was in sin. And then he came and died on the cross for us. And then he died for our sins. But then he left a place, a realm, an anointing. That's why we call him Christ. Jesus Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing. 
Hallelujah. Sometimes we hold our head, head down because we forget who we are. And I realized that because when I said he died for us while we were sinners, I said, how much more will he do for you now that you've been made right for him, with him? How much more does he want to do now that you've been made right with him? If you accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you're in good standings. Hallelujah. You are a part of a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You are the holy, you are a holy nation, the rights of God in Christ Jesus. We are his offspring. Hallelujah. He defeated, he defeated Satan on the cross. Hallelujah. Then he got up and then he laid his hand upon us and he gave us an anointing to, and a power to overcome all the power of the enemy. But, he, but the enemy don't want us to realize that. He want to keep us bound. Can we celebrate the great King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Matthew, then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples, begin to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. Somebody say must go. He must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. Let us pray. Father God, we bless you. We honor you. Lord, we thank you for your presence in the house today. Lord, we just ask that your spirit will rest upon us, that you will open the eyes of our understanding that we would be enlightened, Lord God. Give us ears to hear what you are saying today. Have your way, Lord God. Meet every need, Father. Answer every question. But most of all, you'll be glorified. All of you and none of me. Father, I must decrease, but you must increase. Hallelujah. You know, it's not easy to walk in this, walking with God. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not easy. Uh, Isaiah 55 says, as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. And so we'll be honest, in this walk through life, as we walk with God, sometimes things can get a little hectic because we will want to see and we want God to tell us every step that we're going to take. But the Bible says that a man's heart devises plan, but the Lord directs his steps. So it's okay to have a plan in your heart. But give that thing to God so he can direct your step. And, and we walk by faith, not by sight. We believe in a God that we cannot see. We, we even learn to do things that the world don't even understand. We long to eat, even uh, glory in tribulation. To, to put it um, in perspective, everybody seen the movie uh, Karate Kid? I remember that movie. I remember when he was having Daniel to, to sand the floor and paint the fence. And Daniel thought he was doing it, he was using him. But the whole time he was preparing Daniel for what he was about to do. And that's what it's like sometimes to walk with God. We don't always know what he's doing. We don't understand. We be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we don't get it. And then here come this man, Jesus, who the, at the time the people thought that their king was going to come and go to war against the other nations and conquer them. But here he comes in Jerusalem, lowly, and riding on a coat. Lowly. He didn't come in a great chariot. He came lowly and riding on a coat. He went and he got he got the people and he healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He cast out demons. Whatever you had that wasn't right, if you just come to him in faith, he will heal you of it. He healed the people that were counted out. He even healed a leper. And leprosy, you, you was a counter, you was an outcast. You be, couldn't even be in the midst of the people. He even healed the leper. The le leper cried out, and the Lord Jesus healed him. And this is what he did. But they were waiting. A lot of disciples were waiting for him to start war. They was waiting for him to go to war against the other nations, like in the Old Testament, back in the old days. 
So they didn't understand that the king was coming. And yes, it was going to be a war, but the war is not in the natural. It's a spiritual thing. See, sometimes we get a little off because we, we, we ask God to, to deliver us for something and it seems like we're not getting it in. And, and then we start doing this and we start doing that. We're trying to figure it out. But God heals the inner man of the heart first. Get right on the inside first. When God begins to change the way you feel about that thing, God is working on you. And then continue to take the steps. And I say that because sometimes there are times when God healed instantly. This woman said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. And she was healed instantly. But there were 10 lepers came. And he said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says they were healed as they went. See, they had to take some steps in the right direction. They had to take some steps in obedience to the word of God. So sometimes God heals right then. But sometimes there's a process. But God always heals the inner man of the heart first. It's an inward thing. So, and then when, well, when the Lord Jesus he was on his way to the cross, he came to die on the cross. The scripture we're at now, Peter, James, and John, and I know the, the disciples, the apostles. So Jesus had begun to heal and do all the things we just talked about. But he had not revealed to them who he was. And a few verses before this, he asked Peter, well, who do men say that I am? Some, he said, some say Elias, some say this prophet, some say that prophet. Then the Lord Jesus said, well, who do you say I am? Peter spoke up and said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. See, that thing blessed Jesus because Jesus hadn't told him who he was. And because he knew who he was without Jesus telling him who it was, it even made Jesus say, wow. Amen? Amen. And so he went from being Simon Bar-Jonah, which means unstable, or Simon, son of Jonah, Jonah, son of an alcoholic. So that was his name. But when he got a revelation from the Lord Jesus, he said, thou art Peter. That you're a stone. You go from being unstable to being a stone. Can I tell you, God wants to change your name. It don't matter what the world called you. It don't matter what your family called you. It don't matter what your friends call you. God wants to change your name. Hello, daughter. Hello, son. God wants to change your name. He went from being unstable to solid. Just like that, because of one revelation. This is a few verses before this. And then... He started telling them what was going to happen to him. He said, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. He said, I must suffer. This is in one verse, y'all. The same Peter that he had just blessed and anointed pulled him to the side and said, no, it ain't going to happen. I'm not going to let that happen to your father. Peter was saying, I love you. you I'm not going to let you suffer. I'm not going to let you go through this storm. And it blew my mind because the Lord Jesus talk, looked at him, the same stone. Now the Lord Jesus saying, get behind me, Satan. The same stone, that same Peter. You know, we have, we have a God that, that loves us so much. Now, people will see you in one state or in another state, and they'll judge you based on each state. But the Lord Jesus has the ability to recognize who you are, what man of spirit you're walking in, bless you when it's time to bless you, rebuke you when it's time to rebuke you, and never change the way he feel about you. He didn't stop Peter from being Peter, but Peter was trying to rebuke something that cannot be rebuked. Jesus said, I must suffer. I must suffer. Suffering is the lost ministry in the church today. You know, we, some of us have went through so much hardship as children. We don't want to see our children go through anything. But if you be honest with yourself, what made you say yes to the Lord Jesus? What made you give your heart to him? What made you just throw your hands up and say, Lord, I need you? It was through suffering. It was through God bringing you through a dark place where you've been hurt in a relationship, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the loss of a family, something you didn't know was going to happen, and you had to go through that thing. And so God, Peter was trying to be suffering, which is something that we all must go through. I know they don't like to talk about it a whole lot, but is there anybody here that has never suffered in their life? Is there anybody here that don't know what it's like to suffer? Is there anybody that's going to be running this earth and everything has been laid out in them step by step by step? Because most of the time, the people I see who love the Lord, who really praise and worship, has had some storms in their life. They've been through some hardships and pain. They know that God has been faithful to them. So they praise God even through the midst of the storm. So we have Peter. Jesus said, I must suffer. 
But what was amazing was he said, get behind me, Satan. Peter, Peter's a water walker. He walked on water. He, 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 God used him so much that even if his shadow would walk past people, they was getting healed by his shadow. But he was trying to keep the Lord Jesus from going through what he had to go through. The Lord Jesus began his ministry through baptism of John when he was 30 years old. He waited until he was 30 years old. Then he began his ministry. And he was baptized by, some, by someone that he created. Amen. That's humility right there. He went to John the Baptist. John the Baptist didn't even want to do it. He said, Lord, you should be baptizing me. But Lord Jesus so humble. He said, suffer it to be so. Hallelujah. Let all everything be fulfilled. So he was baptized in the water. And he came up and there was a dove ascend from heaven, uh, uh, like, like, like a spirit, and rest upon him and lit him up. John saw the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever seen the glory of the Lord? In your lifetime, has God ever revealed himself to you? I ain't talking about in front of I'm talking about just a personal thing. Even if you didn't see him, you know that you know that you, that when you went through that thing, God was right there. Hallelujah. You was going through that thing and said, Lord, help me. You come out of that thing and said, Lord, I thank you that I went through that. I wouldn't love him like I love him. I wouldn't praise him like I praise him if I hadn't suffered the way I suffered. Hallelujah. And so here goes the Lord Jesus coming. And, and, and Peter's trying to rebuke suffering. And then the next verse, the Lord, you said, after this blew my mind, he said, don't tell anybody who I am. That's amazing. First of all, that he waited till he was 30 before he, 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 he uh, began his ministry. But then he said, don't tell anybody who I am. Even when he went out and healed the sick, even when he healed the addict, even when he healed the backslider, even when he healed the brokenhearted, even when he feel, healed the alcoholic, any, any, even when he healed any type of affirmation that you was dealing with, he went out with God from Zion. But the Lord Jesus came, and all the stuff he was doing, he was telling the people, don't tell anybody who I am. That's amazing. Because most people I meet today that, that God has raised them up and they're great in the kingdom of God, and I celebrate them, most of the people want you to tell everybody who they are. They, 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 they lay out their bios. They tell you, I've been to uh, such and such school of theology. I thought I did this church for 20 years. I gave my life to the Lord when I was two. I ain't never looked back. They lay that thing out. Anybody ever experienced something like that? Now, I'm not knocking that. The point I'm trying to make is the Lord Jesus says, Shh, don't tell anybody who I am. Why wouldn't he want them to tell anybody who he was? Because Jesus knew. That if people find out before you are who you are before it's time, they'll try to destroy you. The devil will try to destroy you. Just know that you have to wait on the Lord. Look, if you reveal, if God reveal who you are before the time, you know what's gonna happen? Either people are gonna push you out too soon, you ain't ready for it. You are not ready for it. You have the anointing, you have the gift, but you have to wait on the Lord. Or they'll try to hold you back. But when God's about to use you, don't be upset when you're just sitting back in the back or in the back room or, or maybe you're out in the hallways or maybe you're ushering up, whatever. Don't be upset about that because anything precious has got to be hidden. Because you're pressing God hides you. We ought to thank God that he hid us till we grew up, till we got strong, till the time was right. God hides what he loves. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty, he who bears joy in the secret place of the Almighty God shall the bear under the shadow. Amen. Hold on, let me get back a little bit. Let me come where I'm supposed to be. Sometimes you jump out a little bit. Get a little too excited. And so the Lord Jesus has you. Yes, you are anointed. Yes, you have the gift. Yes, you are called. Yes, you are chosen by God. But you have to wait till God's time when it's your season when God call you forth. God will pull you forth. And guess what? The thing comes through suffering. Because when you learn how to suffer, you learn how to worship through a storm. You learn how to say hallelujah, amen, when you're going through a heartache and pain. You learn how to praise the Lord in the midst of the rain. Hallelujah. So God has to make sure you're ready before he calls you forth. So yes, you are anointed. Yes, you are gifted, but it's not your season yet. Be patient and wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Wait upon the Lord. 
Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall mount up on weeds as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. Walk and not faint if you wait upon the Lord. The Lord Jesus didn't want nobody to tell them who he was because he didn't want to get out too soon. If they find out who he was too soon, they would try to destroy him. So they wait for the time. But the purpose never changed. He came to die on the cross. He came to suffer. And Peter tried to rebuke something that could not be rebuked. We got to go through a suffering. We got to go through it. You got to go a time when people talk about you. Don't want to be around you. But you got to go through a time. You got to go through rejection. You got to be ready to go around people who won't speak to you, who won't talk to you, who don't even want to look your way. Because God is training you how to be a soldier. You can't be a soldier if you don't get in a foxhole. You got to have some lies told on you. You got to be mistreated on your God. You got to be in a slow place and still say glory, hallelujah. You are a soldier. Hallelujah. In that kingdom, the kingdom of the Lord. Hallelujah. So God has allowed us to go through the thing and rejection. That's the thing. I don't think everybody has experienced rejection at least once in your life. But it's okay because the stone that the builders reject becomes the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. Yeah. You look up one day and God has you in a position and they're having to come to you. Wait on the Lord and do what you have to in God. So Peter did not want the Lord Jesus to go through what he was going through, so he tried to hold him back. The Lord Jesus called him the devil. Put in that scripture up. And he was still speaking. Well, Ju Judas, one of the twelve, with the great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now his betrayer had given them a sign saying, whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, friend, why have you come? So now, Lord Jesus is on his way to the cross. And Peter and James and John, in his humanity, he had got, uh, he could feel everything that we could feel. So in his humanity, on his way to the cross, he began to sweat great drops of blood. And he said, Father, if it's possible, can this cup pass from me? That was the man in him. The God in him said, not as I will, but as thy will. He stood up again and he said, Lord, if it's possible, Father, if it's possible, let this cup be passed for me. But Father, thy will be done. He said it again. So in his humanity, he felt because he was about to face something he has never faced before, which was death. He was going to the cross. And then he asked the cup to remove in his humanity. But the God in him said, uh, Father, not as thy will, but as thy will. And then Judas, and let me tell you something about Judas. It's a reason that this made Judas something more different than the other disciples. It was something that made him more different. You can understand how he could end up at the place where he is where he betrayed Jesus. Because they get, the Bible gave certain hints about who Judas was. The Bible says he used to keep the money. And he used to steal from the church's money. And then the worst thing, when the Lord Jesus was about to go to the cross, Mary of Bethany came and broke an alabaster box full of uh, 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 expensive perfume, and she poured it on his head. She wiped her tears with his feet. And Judas said, why wasn't this sold and given to the poor? She was mad because she had broke the box. So he despised the Lord Jesus so much, he didn't even want his head to be anointed. He didn't even want his feet to be wiped with tears. He got upset, he got mad, and that's when he went and got the chief priests and scribes. So along the way, you see some things about Judas that's a little different. We know that Peter, we know that Peter uh, denied the Lord Jesus. He was always speaking out. James and John, had, they were hot-headed. Thomas Lord, did not believe in the Lord Jesus. Matthew was a tax collector. Everybody had something going on with, inside of them. But it was something about Judas that was different. See, he, had, he didn't even want the Lord's head to be anointed. He was so jealous, so envious of the Lord. He did not want that. So the God had showed little peace about who Judas was. And sometimes in life, the greater room you leave for the enemy, the, the bigger the enemy that comes in. See, if Judas had stopped when he was stealing the money, he wouldn't have got to the place where he ended up. And I'm saying to say that sometimes there are things that we're struggling with in our life and we submit to it and yield to it. And what the enemy does is he uses that to pull us closer to him. But when we say yes to the Lord Jesus, it don't matter what it is you're going through. It don't matter your situation, your circumstance. The power of God is on the inside of you to have victory over that thing. Amen. 
And so here comes Judas. And now he called Peter that the devil. Here comes Judas. And he says, friend, why have you come? And that's just amazing. Because Judas just betrayed him with a kiss. Peter, come here, Sean. Jamie. So what was happening was Peter and the boys, they were sorrowful. Stand behind me. They were sorrowful. And they did not want Jesus to go to the cross. They were sorrowful. They was his boys. They loved him. So what they did was they were in, the, in their love, they was holding him back. Hold me back. They was keeping him from going to the cross. But they weren't doing it out of spite. They was doing it because they loved him. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus said, you are the devil because you're holding me back mm -hmm. for going through my storm. Mm -hmm. You're trying to keep me from going what I have to go through to get the victory. And then here comes Judas. Judas comes. Watch out. Mm -hmm. Watch out. Judas comes and pushes him right on to the cross. Hallelujah. Judas pushed him right on to the cross. So the people that you think are your friends, are really your enemies because they're always trying to hold you back from going through your storm, from having your pain. From God's perspective, the people trying to hold you back are not your friends. They are your enemies. And that person or that thing, that event that broke your heart and made you say yes to the will of God, that thing is your friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, fellas. Hallelujah. That, that thing, the thing that you thought was your enemy, that thing was your friend because it pushed you to your cross. It made you say yes to the will of God. So you say, hey, hold your head down in shame about that thing. Now you got victory over that thing. That person, that place, that event that broke you down, that thing is your friend. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I had a few friends. Yeah, I've been through some storms. I've had a few friends. Lord knows I've had some friends in my life. I had a few friends. Hallelujah. Look. I'm going to wind on up because I feel like I'm trying to push too fast. But let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I had a few friends. Let me tell you something. Any man or woman that's greatly used to God, somewhere in their life, I will show you a friend. Anybody that God is using as a vessel of his to stand up and speak his word to the people, somewhere in their life, I will show you a friend. You show me a Joseph, and I'll show you a friend that'll tell a lie on you, and a friend that'll throw you in the pits, and a friend that'll forget you in jail. But when it's all over, you're going to have a chariot walking with the king because he meant it for evil. But God, you show me a Hannah, and I'll show you a Panana. If you're going to have your baby, you need somebody to provoke you, somebody to make you cry, somebody to make you pray. I want to thank my enemies for being my friends. They taught me to love the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Touch my side. I had a few friends. Uh, matter of fact, stand up. We're closing. I had a few friends. Hallelujah. Uh, touch my person. I had a few friends. I've had a few friends. Hallelujah. Yes, I had a few friends. Hallelujah. If it weren't for my friends, hallelujah, I wouldn't be able to stand before you today. I've had a few friends. Touch the neighbor. Say, I've been through a whole lot this year. But I'm all right now. It's a friend. It was a friend. I've been through a whole lot this year. And I almost fainted. But I'm all right now. It was a friend. Somebody hear what I'm saying? That thing was a friend. The thing that I thought would break me down, the thing that I despise and shame, that thing has become my friend. Because if I had to go through that, if you had to go through that, you wouldn't worship like you worship. You wouldn't praise like you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can handle this this morning. But some of the worst things that you went through in your life, some of the hardest things you had to endure in your life, it was your cross. It was your suffering. You had to go through the suffering. Because God knows if you don't allow this thing to happen, you won't come to him. 
But Jesus paid the way. He, 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 he suffered first for us, the just for the unjust. And here comes, we call Peter Satan because Peter wanted to hold him back. Sometimes we want to hold our kids back. We don't want them to have to go through anything. We don't have to want them to learn how to endure. But that's not what made you great. What made you great was suffering. What made you great was going through the storm. And you got to learn to teach our children. We got it so advanced now. We want to buy our kids all the computers, all the cars at a young age. We want to get them video. We want to show them how to rap, make their own video. But that's not what made you great. What made you great was going to school with the same jeans on for twice a week. What made you great was wearing small ragged tennis shoes. But something in my heart, I got to go anyway. It don't matter. I'm still going to go. Same jeans I had on the other day, but I got to go. Hallelujah. That's what made you great. But we got to a place that we don't want our children to have to go through that. We want to pull them out of it. We got to teach our children how to suffer, how to endure. Because if my children learn how to suffer, if anything ever happened to them and I'm not around, hard times will never kill them. Because they knew how to take a licking and keep on ticking. It is the very thing that the enemy wants you to feel ashamed about. It's the very thing that God wants to use for his glory in your life. Hallelujah. Just my say it's a friend. I, I thought it was the devil, but it was my friend. I thought she was a devil, but she was my friend. I thought he was a devil, but he was my friend. If I had to went through that storm, I wouldn't praise the way I prayed. I wouldn't love the Lord the way I love him. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I just want to Suffered at the age, at the age that no kids should have to suffer. I've been through some things that no child should have to endure. And then I got old and I got out of the will of God. I ended up in a place I didn't need to be. I was in the streets doing everything the street allowed. But when I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say. That I've been blessed. Oh, has been good to me. And every time when death was hovering all over, the enemy was trying to take me out. There was times I didn't know, I didn't want to see another day. I suffered on measures that nobody should have to suffer. Some of it was by choice, some of it was purpose. But you know what? I thank God for it all. Because if I had to went through that, I wouldn't be standing here today. I thank God for my friends. Matter of fact, I want to thank all my friends. Everybody try to put me down. It ain't just about me. It's about you too. Celebrate God for your friends. Celebrate God for that thing that tried to break you down. Celebrate that for the people that tried to tell you apart. Celebrate God for that. Because if you haven't gone through that, you went worship like you worship. You went praise like you praise. You went love him like you love him. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. It was not a good time. It was a bad time. It was not when things were going right. When things were going wrong. When all hell was breaking loose in my life. That was my friend. Hallelujah. That was my friend. That thing is your friend. Everything that you went through in your life, it was your friend. Because it was seeking to destroy you. And after, and so we have to suffer. And after, we 
you suffer the while. I don't know where the while is, but after you suffer the while, the Lord's going to strengthen you. He's going to establish you. It's all going to make sense. Hallelujah. 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 That thing that said to destroy you, it didn't break you. It made you. Hallelujah. Just like Proverbs says, a man devises his plans, do it from his heart, but the Lord directs his steps. Get you a plan, but then give that plan to God and let him direct it. Hallelujah. Because I got good news. Yeah, weeping may do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. for his sins. Now you baby been made right with him. You are his children. You are the call of the Lord. Hallelujah. God has called you out of darkness into light. For a purpose, for a season, time is this. If you love the Lord and you thank God for what he did, if you can thank God for your friend, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm going to tell you about a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody got to take, pull these young brothers to the side and say, look, brother, I've been through that too. But I want to tell you about a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God brought us out so that we can be a blessing to those who are in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Are there any soldiers in the house today? Are there any sister soldiers in the house today? Hallelujah. Is there anybody that's got the victory to know that we're in a warfare where the Lord Jesus already paid the price on Calvary? Hallelujah. Now, we are the redeemed of the Lord. And if you understand that you are the redeemed of the Lord, let the redeemed say so. Change the beat. Wherever you go, 
John said, I can drink from the cup that you drunk from. Lord, you said, you will drink from the cup that I drunk from. See, the closer you, the more you submit yourself to God, the closer he draws you in. Hallelujah. This is not an age thing. This is about a submission thing. Submit your heart to the great King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he's going to make a way for you. They, they turn back, and I'm saying that to say, because I'm seeing my brothers and sisters right now, and I'm seeing the love of God in everybody's heart. I'm seeing it. But I got to tell you, that just like them, somewhere when you get out of here, that old devil is going to try to take what God has given to you. But you got to be like Peter and James John and say, for God I live, and for God I die. Go ahead and talk about me. Go ahead and put me down. That person you talk about is in the grave. Where God is baptism, but it was raised to God into life. Hallelujah, I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm fine. Hallelujah. I'm standing in the glory, in the shadow of the Almighty, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Don't let the devil take whatever God has given you in the church today. As the day goes by, we got whatever God gave you, hold on to that. Let that guide you, let that keep you. Be further ground. Because God has called the soldiers forth now, y'all. It's time for battle. Hallelujah. Not, not, a, not a natural battle, but a spiritual battle. It's battle time. It's time for warfare. It's time for praise. And know what God's doing along the way? He's doing intentional miracles. Intentional praise. You gotta have intentional surrender. That's what the Lord Jesus, he intended, intentionally surrender to the will of God. And when you do that, guess what you find out? I should have done this a long time ago. If I only knew then what I know now, I should have done this a long time ago. But I'm thankful that because God kept me. I'm thankful that because God kept you. I'm thankful today. Now, this is only if you never give your heart to God. If you've never said yes to the will of God. Then this probably don't make sense. The Spirit of God can move upon you, draw you to him. But if you never give your life to God, This is a petition for you to say yes. For you to say, Father, I need you. Father, I thought I had done so long. That's why I suffered so much. I thought I just won't worry you enough. I've been called names and put down all my life. But now, Father, I realize that thing was my friend. It's because of that, Lord Jesus. That's why I love you. If you never give your heart to God, If you've never said yes to God, that's your opportunity. This is your time. The altar is open. If you have never said yes to the will of God, then come forth. The altar is open. Amen. We got a church full of saved folk. Hallelujah. And if you had given your heart to God, and then life happened. And then things started to happen. You thought and people wanted you to think that you had done something so wrong. But you didn't realize that thing that you went through was a part of your purpose. It's not always because of a choice that you made. This suffering was because of your purpose in God. And people try to tell you it was this reason. If you hadn't done this, you wouldn't be in that. Or you know, your husband putting you down. Or your wife putting you down. Or your children putting you down. Or family members. And they're trying to tell you. But what they don't know is God allowed that thing to happen. Because he want a closer walk with you. If you're here today, and you said yes to the will of God, but then life happens and you turn back, and you want just a closer walk to put you with God, if you want to get closer. If you want to say that that thing was your friend, the altar's open. Come. Come. Hallelujah. Come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is putting on people right now for a closer walk with him. This is your time. Behold, now is accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Come, daughter. Come, son. God is calling you forth right now. You wasn't wrong. It wasn't your fault. That thing was your friend. It was meant to bring you closer to God. And I know there's a lot more of us in here right now. But I'm going to make one more petition. If that is you, and you're not being in the highways and byways or something should have been, or if you turned out of guilt, shame, and condemnation because of that thing that you went through 
and you thought it was your fault. But now and then you realize that things are part of the plan of God to shape you and to make you and to mold you to be his daughter, to be his son. The altar is open. Come forth. Come forth. Hallelujah. 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 Even so. Even so. Come. This is your day. This is your time. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk with God. That's all you want. The Father, I need a closer walk with you. Lord, I can't do this by myself. I need you to lay your hand upon my life. Lord God, I thought I had messed up. But now I realize that day was not free. Lord, I need you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I celebrate you. You give me a purpose. And I did it. And a death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is that two brothers that God is putting for? It's two brothers that God is saying, come closer. I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. It's two brothers that God is saying, come. I'll take it from there. Even so, come. Don't let this moment pass you by. Uh, I feel the Lord pulling on you, brother. I feel the Lord pulling on you. But if you make one step, you can make another step. There's another brother. I don't know who you are, but you know who you are. This is your time. You got all day. You got all day.
just look around. We are all brothers and sisters on this journey together. We need each other. And the closer we come to God, the more we are understanding that, that we got brothers and sisters who've been through the same thing, who know what it's like, but said yes to the will of God. Everybody that's getting baptized, you're the men, this men. I'm gonna ask everybody else to just come a little closer. Wherever you are, just come a little closer. We're gonna get this this fam, just take a step closer. Let's come a little closer. All right, just come a little closer. All right, I got a big family, y'all. I just love to see family gathered together. Hallelujah. Men, stand with these two brothers. I'm right here. I'm right here. Let the brother know you are not alone. I'm here with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. 